who knows a lot about the ground game is Matt Schlapp. He's the chairman of the American Conservative Union, the oldest conservative lobby group in the US. He was political director during George W. Bush's first term in the White House, and in 2000 he was in charge of campaign strategy in Iowa. He spoke to me from the capital, Des Moines. Matt Schlapp, welcome to Late Line. Great to be with you. Republicans in Iowa haven't picked the GOP nominee since 2000 when you were running George W. Bush's campaign there. How relevant do you expect that state to be in this year's presidential race? You know, it's a great question because uh, this year uh, is very much like the year 2000 in the sense that the front runner for the Republican nomination back in 2000, it was George W. Bush, and today it's Donald Trump. Both of those front runners have been doing very well in the polls in Iowa, and uh, if they, if Donald Trump actually were to pull off a win in Iowa as George W. Bush did in 2000, he could be well on his way to getting the nomination. So the results that come out of Iowa, uh, the people of Australia should understand. It's a very big indicator on who's going to get that nomination. Now, as you mentioned, Donald Trump is leading the polls at the moment. Is he the first choice among the Republican establishment? Uh, you know, the Republican establishment's an interesting word, but if you mean the types of people like the insiders who have run campaigns and who live in Washington, D.C., he is definitely not their first choice. Uh, some of them are a little afraid of him. Some of them fear uh, that he's so uh, unorthodox that um, he could kind of wreck the whole way uh, the system has operated. And, of course, there are a lot of voters across America who, who like Donald Trump because he might disrupt the order of things. Tactically, for his campaign in Iowa, that is, what's your assessment of Mr. Trump's decision to boycott the last Republican debate on account of the fact that Fox News wouldn't dump news anchor Megyn Kelly as the moderator? Well, first of all, of course, uh, Fox News, as any news outlet, should have editorial control over what happens on their airwaves. So I think Fox did the right thing to stand up for Megyn Kelly. Uh, you know, but for Donald Trump, I think it actually turned out to be a good thing for a couple of reasons. The first reason is I'm not sure it would have been very good for him uh, or for the process for him and Megyn Kelly to have gotten in an altercation, you know, from the beginning of the debate forward. I think it could have gotten quite ugly. Uh, and as a Republican, I wouldn't have liked to have seen that. Um, and second of all, it really gave Ted Cruz, who is the other leading candidate in Iowa and the other leading candidate for the Republican nomination, a chance to stand on his own two feet without Donald Trump on the stage. And from uh, Donald Trump's point of view, it was a good night because Ted Cruz received a lot of incoming and attacks from many of the other candidates, and it was a tough night for him. Is Donald Trump the best person to take on Hillary Clinton, who looks like being the Democratic nominee? Okay, so there's two ways to look at that. I mean, you can look at it as, um, you know, do you like his policies, and are his policies better than Hillary Clinton's? Obviously, I would think his policies uh, would be better. But then there's a question. I always say politics is about two things. It's about the romance of connecting to voters. But the other side of it is simple math. And the one thing Donald Trump has going for him is that because he's unorthodox, because he's more independent, he might actually bring a lot of voters to the Republican side who would ordinarily not vote Republican. I cannot tell you, as I've driven around Iowa and talked to different people who live in Iowa, I can't tell you how many times the answer is, I'm thinking of voting for Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders, which seems so strange because one is very far on the left and one is on the right. But... The American people seem to be at a point where they really want to shake things up with someone who's unconventional. As I mentioned earlier, you worked for George W. Bush on his campaign in 2000 and as political director in the White House for his first term in That's government. Right. Now, his younger brother, Jeb Bush, is running in this campaign. Very early on, he was considered to be the front runner. What happened? Uh, you know, uh, we just talked about math and romance, uh, and uh, he definitely got the romance part wrong. Uh, voters did not feel like Jeb Bush was talking about the things in the way that he, they wanted him to talk about them. Um, his candidacy did not match the times. That being said, 
I believe he's self-corrected. I believe he's become a much stronger candidate. In this most recent debate in Des Moines, he had a very strong night. Um, and I think there's a kind of a, a rejuvenation going on in his campaign. And, um, you know, politics in America in these primaries, in the, in, in the days when people, it's hard to poll people because they don't answer their landline telephones like they used to. Um, you know, we've seen some surprising results. And I would not be surprised if some candidates who we count out actually have a pretty good uh, night tomorrow. Now, Marco Rubio, the Des Moines Register has put their weight behind him as their preferred candidate. In fact, when right. our Prime Minister was in the United States only very recently, in the last month, he chose to have a telephone call with Marco Rubio himself, the 44-year-old right. uh, Florida senator who comes from a, a Cuban-American background. Now, why do you think it is that whilst so many uh, influential people seem to be behind Marco Rubio, the public doesn't seem to share that sentiment. That's so well said. You, you are so right about that. So many of the big Republican financial contributors are behind Marco Rubio. Many of the uh, kind of conservative intelligentsia are behind Marco Rubio. You know, if you follow sports, he's the kind, he would be the type of athlete that he would check every box that you would want of all of his attributes. Uh, he's diverse. He's dynamic. He's a very gifted communicator. Um, he's uh, really been a scrappy politician and one in a very tough state. And he just has the ability to connect to people. Um, so he's got these really outside God-given talents. Uh, but he has not yet been able to translate in, in any kind of polling that demonstrates that you know, he's at the top. But, like I said, it all starts tomorrow and all the results start coming in. And, uh, and, you know, he might surprise people. There's a real feeling on the ground that if any candidate is to pull off a surprise, that that candidate would be Marco Rubio. Now, there's no proof in any polls that that's happening, but there's no question that there's a buzz. And part of that buzz is he is such a beautiful communicator that when he had another great debate performance the other night, I think a lot of people just feel like, doesn't it make sense for Marco Rubio to be the Republican to take on Hillary Clinton. Now, we know your gaze is firmly fixed on the GOP candidates, but before I let you go, right. I really want your take on the Democratic nomination. Yeah, I mean, last time, uh, eight years ago, in 2008, as a partisan Republican, I was kind of rooting for Hillary Clinton because I just felt like it was her turn, and I'm the, I, I didn't get to vote, and I'm not a Democrat. But she kind of had it swiped away from her by Barack Obama. And what's strange is that it kind of looks like that could be happening again. Bernie Sanders, no one gave him, uh, you know, the credit for really being an outstanding candidate. And he's been an outstanding candidate. He's raising similar amounts of money. He's getting larger crowds. He's got all the young, enthusiastic uh, liberal supporters on his side. And the poll that came out uh, the other day from the Des Moines Register showed him just a couple of points behind Hillary, and he's way up on Sec uh, uh, Secretary uh, Clinton in New Hampshire. Um, and if he were to pull off a win in Iowa and follow that up a week later with a win in New Hampshire, I think the Clintons are going to get that strange feeling uh, that it's happening all over again, just like 2008. A curious contest indeed, Matt Schlapp. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to catching up with you again throughout the course of this very long campaign.